Hey guys, I hope everyone is doing absolutely amazing because today in Cooking with Tammy, we are going to be making a delicious loaded shrimp baked potato. So without further ado, let's introduce these ingredients and get to cooking. First thing up on our ingredient list is our russet potatoes. Russet potatoes, for those of you who don't know, makes the best baked potatoes. You can always find these potatoes at Walmart or at your local grocery store. Next on up is our jumbo shrimp. Now here's the thing, if you don't have jumbo shrimp and you wanna use, I guess, medium sized shrimp, you can definitely do that as well. Our shrimp has been washed off in salt water. I deveined it, peeled it, pat it dry, and it's ready to go. We're also gonna incorporate some veggies with this recipe. So we're gonna be using both red and green bell peppers along with shallots. If you don't have bell peppers or you just wanna omit it, not a problem, it's not gonna take away from the recipe. Also. If you don't have shallots, you can always substitute with using regular onions. Along with our fresh baby spinach, you can always sub. Let's see, what are we going to sub with when it comes to the baby spinach? I'm just playing. You can always use frozen spinach if you prefer it as well. We're also going to be using sour cream, Parmesan cheese, and a cheese blend. Use whatever your favorite cheese blend is, along with butter and heavy cream. When it comes down to our seasonings, we're going to be using garlic powder, onion powder, Cajun seasoning, paprika seafood seasoning if you don't have the seafood seasoning not a problem you can always leave that out for those of you interested in the type of seafood seasoning that i'm going to be using we're going to be rocking out with the cedar plank salmon seasoning and last but not least we have salt ground black pepper and oil so without further ado guys let's get to cooking we're going to start the preparation process with our potatoes get a fork and all you got to do is place some holes into the potatoes. That's going to allow all of that excess steam during the baking process to be released. Now, I know most of you are probably like, wait a minute, did she forget to add the oil? No, I didn't forget to add the oil. This way right here is more effective only because, think about it, if you add the oil first and you go in with the fork, there's a high chance that the potato can slip away from your hand and you can get stuck with the fork. So the best thing to do is get in there, put those holes into the potato first and foremost, and then we're gonna add our oil. The type of oil that I'm gonna shine this potato up with is avocado oil. However, feel free to use any type of oil, whether it be olive oil, veggie oil, canola oil, absolutely up to you and what you have in your pantry. Get that potato oil greased up, and once we're done, we're gonna hit it off with a little salt for that extra flavor. Wrap it on up in the aluminum foil, just like this. We're gonna repeat the same process on the other potato as well. Once you're done, we're gonna place it into our oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're gonna allow these potatoes to bake for about one hour or until fork tender. All right, while our potatoes are doing its thing, it is time for us to season up our shrimp. Check out how clean these shrimps are. They look absolutely Perfect. We're gonna add some oil to the shrimp. Of course, just a small drizzle. Once we're finished, we're gonna hit it off with a little bit of salt, ground black pepper, a little dash of garlic powder. I'm gonna add some onion powder as well. Same thing applies, don't add too much. We're gonna hit it off with some Cajun seasoning. And we're gonna also add some paprika. Now the paprika, of course, doesn't have any flavor, but it's gonna give it a nice color, all right? It's gonna make the shrimp pop with vibrancy. Once we're done, we're gonna hit it off with some cedar plank salmon seasoning or seafood seasoning, either or, and you should be good to go. We're gonna get in there with our trusty fingers and combine the seasoning onto the shrimp, mix it up really good, make sure everything is well incorporated. And of course, now that we're done, we're going to set that bowl aside and move on to preparing our bacon, baby. Now, when it comes to the bacon, two things. You can choose to prepare it in the oven or you can put it in the skillet and fry it on up. For this particular recipe, I'm going to be frying the bacon on up only because I want some of that bacon grease. Yes, I do. I'm going to be using it for that extra added flavor. All right. So we're going to add it to the frying pan allow the bacon to do what it do and of course when it comes to crispiness and crunchiness you are going to cook your bacon however you prefer once you're done you're going to get in there flip it on over allow it to cook on the other side as well so far our bacon is looking absolutely gorgeous 
I'm going to remove the bacon, of course, and place it onto a paper towel lined plate. And we are going to set that bacon aside. You hear me? <laughs> Moving right along, we have a ton of oil in our pan. So off camera, what I did was I took a paper towel and I dabbed some of that oil out of the pan. However, you can always drain some of that oil out, adding our shrimp to that bacon grease. We're gonna fry our shrimp on up, allow it to sear. And how do we know when it's time to flip the shrimp over? I get that question a lot. So we're gonna answer it right here, right? <laughs> Once the shrimp turns pink, you're going to flip it on over and allow it to cook evenly on the other side as well. Cooking the shrimp should take about, let's see, one and a half to two minutes, depending on the size of shrimp, the pan that you're using, and how high your flame is. Now, this right here is perfectly cooked shrimp. So we're going to go ahead and remove it from the pan, place it into a bowl, and just basically stand back and admire because this shrimp right here mm, is looking real, <laughs> I was going to say son, looking really good. That's what we're going to say, all right? Now that we're done, using that same pan, of course, because we're building flavors, guys, only flavors. We got the shrimp that was in the pan along with the bacon grease, which is perfect. What we're going to do is we're going to add some butter to this pan, allow the butter to melt down really good. Once you're done, you're going to add your veggies. You're going to add both your bell peppers and shallots or onions. Combine it really good. Allow all of those flavors to hug our veggies. Mm -hmm. We're going to cook down our veggies for about a minute before adding the spinach. The spinach is going to take no time to break down, trust me. In a matter of seconds, about 30 seconds, and boom, this is what we're going to have. Veggies are perfectly sauteed, so it's about that time, guys. We're going to add our heavy cream, and adding the heavy cream, because it's a liquid, it's going to deglaze the bottom of the pan, which is perfect. Also, we want a nice, thickened sauce. We don't want our sauce to be too runny. So it's important that you start off with a small amount of liquid first. Mix it on up, get all of those flavors incorporated. At this time, we're gonna lower our flame. And once we're done, we're gonna hit it off with some paprika because we want our sauce to have a nice, vibrant color. Mix it on up. We're gonna add a little bit of Cajun seasoning. We're gonna add a little bit of seafood seasoning as well. Onion powder. garlic powder and mix it all up once again we're also going to add some of our reserved shredded cheeses and of course if you want to loosen up the sauce just a bit you can always like i said before add a little bit more liquid whether it be heavy cream or even water or broth we're going to add a little bit more heavy cream now, however, you can always use water or even broth to loosen up the saucy sauce, either or. We're also gonna hit it off with some Parmesan cheese for that nice complimentary nutty flavor. And it's about that time. So we're gonna add a couple pieces of shrimp. We're not adding all of the shrimp, but just some of the shrimp. Simply because we wanna get some more of that shrimp flavor going on. As if the sauce can get any better, we're gonna add some bacon crumbles to the saucy sauce. Yes, we are. However, we're not gonna use all of the bacon, just some of it. So as is finished, so we're going to turn our stovetop off. And guess what else is finished, guys? Our baked potatoes are done. I went in, I tested it with a fork. It's nice and fork tender. So we're going to go in there, get those bad boys on out of the oven. And we're going to unravel it. Be very careful, I might add, because guess what? These things are hot. These potatoes is hot. So take necessary caution. You don't want to burn your fingers. Don't say, I ain't tell you. Anyway, guys, anyway, we're going to remove the top of the potato. We're not cutting it in half. As you can see, I'm just slicing a thin layer on the top. 
Once we're done, we're gonna place it to the side. We're gonna take our spoon. We're gonna scoop all of the potato out, basically separating the potato from the skin. However, since this potato is so hot, you have to be careful. You don't wanna break the skin too much because then you're not gonna have a shell to put the potato back into after you finish mashing it. All right, feel what I'm saying? So be very gentle. We take all of the potato out, place it into a bowl. You're gonna do the same thing for the second potato as well. Once everything is in a bowl, we're gonna hit it off butter, a pinch of salt, ground black pepper, sour cream. If you don't have sour cream, you can always incorporate cream cheese. That right there would do the trick. Mm, so delicious. Mix it on up really good. While the potatoes are still nice and hot, we're gonna add our cheeses. We're gonna add our cheese blend along with our Parmesan cheese. Now that everything is blended, we can introduce our milk, or should I say heavy cream, to our potatoes. Make sure everything is well combined. Add a couple pieces of bacon. Not all, just some, all right? <laughs> Mix it up once again. Chop some fresh chives, and we are gonna introduce it to our perfectly whipped mashed potatoes. And it's time for the fun part, guys. Mm -hmm. Remember that delicious saucy sauce that we created earlier? We're gonna take some of it and place it into the potato skin, just like that. Mm-hmm, talk about decadent and tasty. We're gonna add our perfectly whipped mashed potatoes. followed by some more sauce. And we're gonna add some more cheese. We're gonna top it off with our shrimp. And of course, don't allow all of that delicious juice, okay, from the shrimp to go to waste. Do not put that in the sink. We're gonna take it and drizzle it onto the baked potato and give it even more flavor. Chop up some more bacon and make some more crumbles. We're gonna add it to the top just like that. Top it off with some more cheese. Add some chives to the top. Get that presentation going, and we're gonna place it back into our oven. Not at 400 degrees, guys, but more so at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, basically to allow our cheeses to melt on down. Once you're done, after about five to 10 minutes, we're gonna remove it from the oven, and, and this is what you're gonna have right here. Your loaded shrimp baked potato should look just like this. And let me tell you something, the shrimp alone is absolutely delicious. As always, I'm your girl cooking with Tammy and I will definitely catch you guys in another video. Talk to you later. Bye guys. Don't forget to turn that oven off. <laughs> later guys.